Today I'm having a conversation with Tommy Edwards. She's a business analyst with many years of experience. I feel like I'm an experiment kid. And you know when they ask mm. you as a kid, what do you want to be? I just kept saying accounts. I don't even know where I got it from. I just knew that Nigeria was not the place for me anymore. Went to my dad and I'm like, I want to go to the UK. And he just laughed. Just is like, well, good job. <laughs> this, this is my own life. I have to fight for myself. This is now, we're not looking for big money to go so to you have the to UK. We have to raise the bar. Up. Tommy, you have a pretty face. I'm like, okay, let's put this pretty face to work. So I was homeless, broke, nothing, nothing. Like, nothing. And this is where I now know that we are poor. In our own room, she, her fiancé, and her baby. Three. To me, I'm now number four. In that room? In that room. Welcome to London. <laughs> Day one, my back. Day two, this is what I left in Europe for. And I'm like, this is not going to cut it. This is not what I left it for. I really feel like I can be anything I want to be. It's yeah. just about, am I ready to pay the price? Hi there, my name is PC Timmy and welcome to Founders Connect, a show where I spotlight the best of African innovation by hosting conversations with leading and emerging founders and operators in the African tech space. The goal is to discover the stories, learn the ideologies, the obstacles they overcame, the lessons they learned along the way, and very importantly, to document their journeys. Do like and comment on this video as you watch it and please subscribe to my channel. I promise there's always something fantastic to learn here. Enjoy the video. Today I'm having a conversation with Tommy Edwards. She's a business analyst with many years of experience. Um, she's the president of U20 Young Entrepreneurship Alliance and she's the founder and CEO of Tech One M. Hi Tommy. Hi Chris, thanks for having me. Did I, is there any other thing I missed? Because I know you are many things. So I'm the CEO of Tedbury and also Tech One M. Okay, so we'll talk about the, how you're doing both of them and how they, how they differ. Yeah, but first let's start from history. Right. Tell me about like your background, just as much as you can share about growing up, where you grew up, where you're from. Um, so born in Lagos, born and raised in Lagos. So my parents, my dad is an engineer, um, a mechanical engineer, I worked for Xerox. My mom, a midwife, worked for the local um, council. But then I could see that they wanted to give us the world, but couldn't afford to do that. So they decided to, you know, while they're doing their day job, my dad was working for Xerox. My mom had like a, oh my mom, she's like hey, she's she's a proper serial entrepreneur, but then, but just micro, if you get what I mean. So she had this thing that is a, it's a chemist, mm. or UK we say pharmacy. You know, a combination of that, and you still have like a mini supermarket, like your off license here in the UK. But I saw a parents that just wanted to give us the world. So they sent mm. us to the best school around there, which was, um, St. Jude's private school so that was where I did my primary and then when it came to secondary um, where I they didn't send me to boarding school so this is where I went they sent you to boarding school yeah they did <laughs> they shipped me and threw me to boarding school and the reason and I feel like that is where my life changed a little bit because I see me I see some of my brothers in terms of the resilience that I have I'm like, you guys are too butty. I don't know what is Were you the only one in your family that went to boarding school? That survived the entire six <laughs> years. Fast forward, we, I then had to go to uni. And this is where there's this first, first born syndrome that I, I say now. I feel like I'm an experiment kid that they are trying to... <laughs> to body school first. <laughs> so they are looking at... Um, because they were so busy, they had to then look at... Okay, there's one... Um, sister across our house she was going to polytechnic and they felt like okay Tommy you're very young go to polytechnic first then go to uni. oh so they shipped me again <laughs> and took me all the way to offer as in Quara state and I was 16 but then offer made me also grow up so I was building resilience so I think mm. when I look back at my story I feel like my early years, looking at the things my parents did, trying different things, succeeded in some, failed in some, but all that for me was just basically building resilience. And so, um, after a far, so it was then, okay, now let's get you into uni. Mm -hmm. You then need to do a direct entry into University of Lagos. We tried to do a direct entry into University of Lagos. Long and short story, direct entry didn't work. I had to then- So you started from 100 level? We get it. But then I missed the major points. Before going into um, offer, 
my mom had to travel to the US and then she left our entire um, what's it called our entire shop with me so the whole chemist the whole thing I had to manage my dad has to go to work every day so all of a sudden I have 14 employees that oh. I now need to pay and remember I'm a Nigerian only girl I have to feed the whole family you know so this is where I actually learned the act of entrepreneurship and I learned a ton of things doing that and then every Friday we we'll go to the community the cooperative bank to go dropping money so while on the queue one day I just heard this women they were just just in, uh, so it's just speaking in Yoruba. Ah, Muhammad uh, and Karaka, Lali, Jade. You know, we can't go can out. I used to speak Yoruba. Well. You used to speak Yoruba. Can you speak Yoruba? I can't speak Yoruba. Oh, okay. Now. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> well, sometimes people are like, "Is this Yoruba?" I speak Yoruba. I can't speak Yoruba. It's, it's, it's British Yoruba now. It depends on what I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, so you're yeah, like, okay. So I was like, hmm. I heard my neighbor. Who our, our family sells Toki? They go to Kotonu to bring Toki. They have a cold room. She was telling me about fabrics. Yeah, these ones are complaining about fabrics. I have money in my hand. I'm putting it inside this place. We don't really need this money right now. What if I take this money? Buy, go to Kotonu, buy this thing, sell it to this ones. They get paid every month, isn't it? Because now I understand how salaries work. Mm. Gets, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a boss. Mm. Do you get the point? So that means they can, if I tell them to, if they buy more, they'll pay me at the end of the month. Maybe this will work. Let me try with just 50k. So that's how I just listened. I did, I did as if I did not hear anything they're saying. I'm like, there's no point talking. They will not believe me. You're a small child. Mm. Bring the goods. Then they will start to talk to you. So I just told my uh, my friend who uh, was my neighbor that, you know that thing you were saying that day? Do you mind me going to? Is it, if it's a one day trip, Popsy will not know that I left, you know? And he's like, yeah, we'll go very early. And so as as his, as his car is going to work, we we'll just you go. Travel. <laughs> so I had all the plans, and then we did that. I bought the whole fabric, came back, and I went to the women in the um, bank with the same preposition. But I'm like, okay, you can buy. You can only pay me later if you buy more than two. Eight. So you worked. Really worked very well. I'm like, <laughs> so I had money. Did your parents know? No. <laughs> They probably found out now that I've been talking about it, but yeah. they didn't know. So I, I had that. Then I was able to quickly replace the capital back and be able to do all that. So that was my very first taste of entrepreneurship. Well, and that was your own business. This one was not that managing was it from business. your mom at all. So because I already knew this, when I was then going, it's when I was now placed in like a place like Unilag, mm. where people had a lot of money, they didn't know what to do with it. I then, they had all this belt name. Everyone wanted to have their name on their belt. People, so I, I decided to start selling those things as well. So I learned all of that. But then after a while in, in school, many of my friends would come to the UK to their summer break. I couldn't afford to. And I just knew that Nigeria was not the place for me anymore. And I was still in uni, like I haven't even finished. I was in 300 level. And I'm like, I don't see anything here for me. Um, I need to leave and I always had this thing I wanted to be an accountant you know when they ask mm. you as a kid what do you want to be I don't know I just kept saying accountant I don't even know where I got it from <laughs> um, so I started to do ACCA in Nigeria so I wanted to then get a school here in the UK where I could fully um, learn ACCA and write my exam in the UK so they found a school went to my dad and I'm like I want to go to the UK and he just laughed <laughs> <laughs> And I felt, what can I do? I just said, you know, I'm going to find ways to make money. And I spoke to my friends. I'm like, okay, everybody was like, you know, there's all these ushering jobs that you could do. So I remember there's Lagbaja had this old, um, what's the name of that? There's this, oh, I'm God. Sorry, sorry. It's like a shrine thing in the Ikecha. I didn't grow up in Lagos. Oh, you didn't so grow up in Lagos. So people in Lagos know what I'm They're already screaming <laughs> the name right now. So there's this Lagbaja. Um, I don't know if it's a shrine. There's this, there's this place, the Lakota performs in mm. Ikeja. And um, so they want to need ushers. So, you know, you do ushers there. But you know that your, your classmates are going to come there. And in school, you're a big girl on campus. Yeah. How do you do both? <laughs> so you wear wigs. So you always wear this kind of, just to hide your faces. Um, and then we make money from that. I'll give it to my uh, my friend. She'll convert it into pounds. Because if it's in Naira, I'll spend it. Mm. So I decided to convert it into pounds. Then the big break then came when I got like a number of modeling contracts at the same time. So as at that time, Coca-Cola just bought Limca, 
So I became like the calendar girl. They paid money. How wait, wait. Let's let's <laughs> back <laughs> How many? How many? So you were doing the cotton business at some point. Yes. And they selling different accessories, including belts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're doing ushering work for Lagbaja's. Yes, yes. Then play performance. Then you're also doing what was this last one? Uh, modeling as well. Yes. Which other businesses did you do in school? So you know, it's everything. So like, you're just hustling. Oh, yes, that's the whole point. <laughs> I was just basically hustling to get this thing to work. So I, I got, I was on Teju Form Billboard, Zudu Osu Billboard. <laughs> There was quite a few things. Uh, it just happened at the same time. And this is where I feel... So you must have been very popular in you know, like... No, I wasn't that popular. Like I said, I'm a proper introvert. <laughs> you won't even know. I mean, I'm just there. <laughs> but but, but what, um, what you would know is that if you're close to me, you're like, oh, okay. No, my head is just always going after something. But at this time, this is where I believe my faith met the demand that I'm looking for. Mm everything just lined up and i'll give you an example the whole limb cutting that actually gave me the biggest money somebody pulled out and they needed somebody for the next day and because i told my friend that oh um, if anything comes up oh, just remember yeah. me and that one just said oh, i have this friend oh she's very pretty she will be able to go and i just showed the picture and yeah tell her to come the next day i got it and i did the shoot the next day it doesn't really happen like that yeah but i feel like everything the stars basically aligned for me and then i got the money and then i sent i paid the school fees and i got the paper and i went to my dad see i've got it and i paid ah the man is like yeah are really serious about this <laughs> like, yes this is the only move this is it and um, it's like okay so now let's make sure you get the visa and you know to get the visa you have to show uh all of it and this is where i now know that we are poor because mm. you typically think that so if someone should ask you now somebody wants a visa wouldn't you just go and just download your bank statement because mm -mm. mm. so you have to find shares your father's friend that mm. has the gathered money gathered, puts in the bank. Oh, yeah. it was very stressful so we had to be so so there my parents became very very invested that if this girl has gotten this, this far. far we have to see her true and in the, all of that zoom it i was doing my own fasting and praying in one corner that if they're only giving one visa today this is only my own that they're giving. <laughs> and and so i found myself in the uk so did you f finish from your lag or you just like no dropped i dropped out? i'm one of those dropout stories so i dropped out and then i found i i, I came to the uk and i came to the uk <laughs> This is the UK story. It's where um, I'm glad everything I went through in Nigeria happened because I won't have been able to survive the UK. Mm, how so? So I came to the UK with my suitcase, rolled it to the college, thinking it just worked that there's just a room for me. This this college was like, in all those colleges. It was a college in Farringdon called Westminster College, mm. and um, they're like, oh, you didn't. We've already given out the room you are supposed to get to somebody else, so you don't have a place to stay. So I'm stranded. I know nobody um, here in the UK. I know I have one auntie or one, but I don't know them like that. And um, I just had to call my dad. And my dad said, okay, oh, I'll call Mosumola, my cousin. And then when it was happening, Aunt Mosum was very, very happy. Uh, told me, come. And then I went to stay with her, thinking, you have a room, you have a bed. No, shocker. As I got there, this is like a... They've broken the, the, those buildings down now. It's like a, the tall high rise in Elephant mm. and Castle. And um, she was, it's a two bed. The living room was rented out to some other people. Room one rented out to somebody else. They are in room two. Yeah. This place has one bathroom, toilet where everybody goes to. In our own room, she, her fiancé, and her baby. Three. To me, I'm now number four. In that room? In that room. Welcome to London. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is the London they're talking about. Okay, so how do we sleep? You know, there was a cot, so you just basically lie down in that cot, sleep. The leg is just like a mess. But I was grateful because, because you have so much to sleep. Exactly. Because if I don't have that, you know, what would I have done? And you know, she was fun. Where we had, you know, where we had very, very good times. And then she told me, ah, lucky for you that you just arrived. She does cleaning jobs. And she said, there's this job I just got. 
they have one key and they need two people so you just got a job right away so lucky i'm like oh okay and then we went to regent we have to wake up five o'clock in the morning we went five o'clock in the morning to regent street to go clean other people's offices so it's like cleaning of course i'm bad at it so <laughs> and i'm cleaning toilet told me what she ain't shake on you you clean it this way i'm like day one i'm like tell me resilience Day so two. literally the next day you woke up at 5 a.m to go and clean to go and clean and i was we cleaning toilets cleaning people's offices you know what i mean yeah. like proper cleaner mm -hmm. so he has stocking their fridge cleaning their rubbish and i'm like I passed down by that office now. I'll be like, well, in fact, my, my office is very close to it now. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, wow. Okay, day one, my back. Day two, this is what I left in New York for. Day three, I remember I was not, I was living in Morimi. I already have like, I have a, a, a cream and business. You know, you know what I mean? I have like a way of living. And I'm like, this is not going to cut it. This is not what I left it for. So I've summoned the courage and I told her that, I'm um, sorry, this Friday, this week, because I only spent one week in the thing. I can't do this anymore. She was upset because it means that she has to either find another person or lose the job. So I was mm. putting her at risk. You know what I mean? But I'm like, she said, you're not going to pay you. I said, I don't care. So we got home that day. I came downstairs and I said, I'm going to enter whatever bus I find. Wherever this bus is ending, that's where my story begins. Mm. I got into bus 453 and it ended at Baker Street. Came down, crossed the road. I still started walking. I'm looking for a job. And then I found this place that, well, while I was working, I was looking at all the things I was seeing on the road. So I found this place that we're looking for an assistant to work in the shop. So I entered this place and I'm like, I'm looking for a job. I saw your sign. The girl's like, Where's your CV? CV? Oh, they taught me that in school. I'll be back. So I remembered while I was working, I saw um, Easy Cafe. And then I just went to Easy Cafe, typed out the CV, gave it to the girl. Before I could cross the road, they called me for an interview. I got the job. So now, this job was paying even way half of minimum wage. But I didn't care. It's better I than cleaning. Made, do you understand? And then, while I was chatting somebody up one day, the person just said, Oh, you sound, now, you know, really learned and everything. I'm like, yeah, 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 I went to school. And then you're know, like, oh, what did you study? I said, okay, I studied insurance, but I didn't quite finish and blah, blah, blah. And she said, oh, my cousin um, works at an insurance company and they're looking for, you know, more people. Do you mm. want me to connect you to her? I'm like, absolutely. And basically, that's where that, that story began. Before I you know what was happening, I got the job. We started to do the induction. I walked into the door uh, on the day of the induction. I saw a gentleman in a cream suit and I'm like, what audacity? <laughs> Who wears a cream suit? That gentleman is my husband today. Oh, so I had to just check okay. that into the story. <laughs> and then he saw like, oh, is this properly dressed girl? Da, 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 da. And, was he uh, working at AIG? As, as, as he well. also got the job. Right. So it, then it was like an induction mm. for us to have an induction back then. And um, for, you know, before you know what's happening, of course, we, we were just friends and, and stuff like that, but he ended up not taking the job. Um, after the induction, it, the induction was two weeks, he did one week, and then he got his um, IT job and did not come back. Mm. But that was kind of like the, right. you know, like life is like all about dots. So that mm. was one of the dots that he had to connect and I had to connect. He basically came there to find me mm. without knowing, you know. Mm. And um, so, but, at the insurance place, what I learned was within one month, I was just getting a ton of awards. I I knew I could sell, but I didn't know I could sell that well. Mm. Why? Because I've been selling from Nigeria without even knowing that this is, you know, I had yeah, all these skills. Experience. Now you now got two weeks training on really on top, how yeah. to sell. But while I was doing that, people kept talking about mortgages. What is mortgage? <laughs> all right, so I googled it, uh, or whatever we were using back then. I googled it, obviously, I was googled it. I googled it, and then I'm like, oh, this is what you need to do to become a mortgage advisor. So that was then the new path for me. So, I'm so you left insurance and went into No, I was still doing insurance, but I was studying mm -hmm. to then become a mortgage advisor. So when it got to the time where, okay, I really want to do this whole mortgage thing, I'm like, this is what I'm not going to learn. But there was no school that could teach me that, so I have to pretty much take the, the textbook, read it, and go write the exams myself. 
and I, I did that, um, battled with it, had failed pass, failed pass, finally passed the entire thing and I was now able to do mortgages. This, my, you remember the guy in the cream suit yeah. that I met? So um, I just got a call from him from out of nowhere that they are setting up a company um, and it's a five guys and they need a female person to be involved and no other person came to mind but me. And I'm like, okay, why? And it's like, there's just something about you. I'm like, okay, so what is this company you guys are starting? It's like, I'm not going to tell you about it. I just really want to know that I'm right on what I'm thinking. Well, can you tell me, write an article, what you are going to do with one million pounds if you have it today? I'm like, okay, let's do this. I don't have one, of course I don't have one million pounds. <laughs> but I'm like, okay. So I think what he wanted to say is how, where can your thought really yeah. take you? I can't remember what I wrote, but it was like, I probably wrote things about property investment. I wrote things about uh, setting up, um, you know, a company, but there was two underlying things about the vision, which was whatever thing I put my hands into has to definitely help people solve a need. Mm. And in return, I then reap the financial benefit. And so I'm like, okay, so now you guys, you've made me write this article. I am now homeless. What do I do? So I then had to move in with them. Getting to their own house was a big house. It was like a five, six bedroom house. So I was just there and I, as at this time, I now have my certificates for mortgages. I hung that in their study. And somebody just came in one day, came to see one of the ladies there and said, Oh, who owns this certificate? And he said it was Tommy. Ah, blah, blah, blah. we got chatting. Why are you not working as a market advisor? I'm like, I don't know how to get my FSA license. And then he said, okay, I can introduce you to so 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 people. And for the company they were trying to form, mm. they wanted me to do like properties. Mm. It was a company called Fortunes Network. Um, they were going to do. This was when the internet was just basically booming. This is. I'm now in 2005 um, and they wanted to create a way in which you can come into a place and be able to buy properties, be able to see um, anything that has to do with fashion, beauty, mm. clothes, all in one place. And so people were handling different aspects and I needed to handle the property the uh, aspects of it. So being a market advisor was obviously going to help that, but that venture uh, became very very tiresome there was no money there was no funding everyone was broke everybody you know and we just had to pretty much stop that so my insurance uh, job as well one thing led to another I had to leave the insurance job and to concentrate on what we were working on and before I know what was happening there was no money coming in so I was homeless broke um, nothing nothing really like nothing <laughs> so when this guy said you can meet these people all i had was my pride and my integrity and my dignity and i was like okay i'll go meet these people um but then i'm like i'm not i don't know them so i'm not going to say let's just form a venture mm. i've learned from that i'm like i want to form my own venture and then we can then see how we can partner so i got to this place and they are property developers they were developing like 200 houses in the UK. They needed mortgage advisors to be able to do that. I didn't mm. even know that mortgage advisors were scarce. No, so I've got something pretty unique. And they're like, this is a table. They want somebody to be able to take this table and be able to do their mortgage. I'm like, okay, I will take the table, but then I'm going to operate under my own company name and we will just be able to share this office. And they're like, okay, that works with them. But I'm like, that being said, loan house, <laughs> a license. They're like, okay, we just sat that out, just connect it to this and this. I'm like, what? This is something that took me a long time to figure out and you could just connect just like that. And true to their word, they connected, when it was happening, I had my license. And I remember my very first mortgage that I wrote was a million pound property for one Alaja, beautiful lady in Canary Wharf. And um, my commission was 10,000 pounds. Remember I told you I had zero. So all I could think of was my parents back home. Move them instantly, the same year. Move them away from a mother thing, straight to my godo. My brothers, okay, what school did you say you're in again? 
no, change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, while I was in all of this, I still had my student visa. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, okay. So, but then I'm like, read between the lines. They said you can do 20 hours, no recourse to public funds. That's the restriction. I don't have any recourse to public funds. I can pick that I'm doing 20 hours because I, they did not say you can't form a company. Why you know? You, do you understand? So that was, that was my take on it. And I kept doing what I had to do. I made a ton of money. And um, I think that was the same, you know, as you just tend to say to change uh, very, very quickly. Then the, but then I realized that Tommy, you're a dropout. All you have is this. You have to find ways to fill in the gap. So I started to have a quest for more knowledge. Mm. So I did, um, decided to do like a, a postgraduate diploma with Aston Business School to then convert that into like a full MBA. So I did that and also always wanted to go to Harvard. So I did like um, the Harvard executive program um, for three months. So this time around, yes, you have money. You have, um, there is a mortgage crisis going on. So that money is about to disappear. And um, you need to then think of how do you build something that is not just micro things. Remember all the things I've seen around me, yeah, small business here, yeah, micro yeah. here, hustle here. How do you build a company? I didn't understand that. And that was why I was reading in all the Harvard Business Reviews. I took two courses, Project Finance and cross border Innovation. And um, I learned a whole lot from especially cross border Innovation in the, in the sense of how to find something that you're thinking differentiating a painkiller from a vitamin. Mm. And basically, how do you find something that people just basically have to use to solve this pain that they really, really have? I'm not something that uh, I might just need it. And I said, okay, when I come back, this is what I'm going to find. I'm going to build something from scratch all over again and really, really find something that is truly sustainable that can actually be something that has a major legacy. Mm. But I always have to be something that solves a major pain for people and hopefully might just be what would make me rich. So I knew living Harvard, going back to uh, London, I have to start from scratch. I don't have a whole lot of disposable income anymore because I've invested in the wrong things and I need to build something that's going to be truly, truly sustainable. And I was just trying to search mm. what is it going to be. So the first thing I saw was uh, someone comes in to always give you a parcel and I'm questioning and I am just keep asking. I just wanted to find out how that works. He told me the process. I decided to join him. One of the drivers that was coming to deliver my parcel decided to join him on this trip because I'm here. I don't have anything I'm doing. I'm trying to find something new, but I don't know what it is. And um, I then discovered that, okay, um, they have agents that basically help these companies find drivers mm. when they can't fulfill the large demand, especially during the Christmas period. So I needed to understand exactly how that market works. So I decided to apply as a driver to Yodel. And they were doing their induction. I wanted to go there to learn all the lingua. I just did one day, learned all the lingua and set up my career company. So that was my, so I would say this is like now my first proper company. Mm. And um, so I set up a, a career business and the whole point is, and this is a recruitment business, finding drivers for them and then basically getting the contract. But I didn't have any contract. I didn't have any driver. So what do I do? I put up an ad on Gumtree and people just kept, uh, like I have a job, people kept coming in, like, I mean, you must have your own van. Mm. This time around, I know the lingua. So I've already put all of that in there. And um, how do I not get a contract? So I wrote all the list of all the um, FedEx, CPD, all, that, yeah. all, that, all the different branches, and we're going to be visiting them one by one. So I remember this day, the, the last day, I was just visiting, the, everything was just, just shutting the door at me, especially the ladies at the reception. Mm. You're trying to find your operations manager or the manager of this uh, of this particular mm. depot. And they're like, no, it's busy. Uh, do you have an appointment? No, I'm just shutting the door. Rightfully so. Well, 
I got so fed up and on this day we had a list of 35 to visit we visited 34 and I'm like do you know what I can't, I can't do this again let's just go home so this is me and my husband driving all around and he's like Tommy you wrote 35 see it true at least you know that you can go to bed knowing that you've seen everything true yeah. I'm like ah Thank God for his own wisdom, because me, I, everything in me was like, we're going to now go all the way to Enfield, an hour from where we are. I was like, let's just do it. And then we got there, properly dressed every time. I'm not, you know, I was properly dressed and everything. And then we got there, and this time around, you're coming in a Range Rover to logistics industry that everybody just wears. Mm. You know? I'm wearing a short mini skirt with a nice blouse, you know, carrying a proper bag. You're completely out of place. This is not how they look. Mm. But I'm like, yes. But I, that shows that I know I don't have to look that way for me to be able to do this job. Mm. Do you understand? And by the time we got to the reception, I was still, she was already about to say no. The depot manager was just coming down. And what attracted him was, who are these looks professional out of place. Yeah. looking? Because my husband was also in a proper suit. Who are these professional looking people mm. in this place, you know? And then we just turned and we spoke to him and said, oh yeah, we run a company in that, that, that we could help you with your driver problems. And then he's like, oh, come upstairs. The rest of the street, we got the job. <laughs> <laughs> the 35th one. <laughs> yeah, the 35th one. We got that depot. Pro it so happened that they had a problem and the supplier that they had could not deliver. And then this was how we were able to, we said, oh yeah, we have the driver. We didn't have no driver. I was like, in my head, I'm like, Tommy, are you going to get this driver's but I'm like, I saw a lot of applications coming in. I'm just not going to sleep and I'll find this person. And um, so that was how I started the career business. How long did you run a career business for? For a while, for quite a long time. But in the midst like of- how many years? Five, 10? Yeah, probably like five years. Yeah. In the midst of doing that, my brother, remember one of my brothers that I sent to school? Yeah. One of them came to me and said that, um, it, was a, it was at Bowen then and said he wants to study computer science. He was studying, I think, biochemistry, and he said he wasn't just getting it. But then for him to change to computer science, he has to lose one whole year, and he has to go to a different school. Mm. So this, my brother, then went to a different school, Leeds City University, started um, studying computer, computer science. science from the beginning. And I said, okay, if we're going to waste that money to do all of this, then you might as well do this computer science well. Mm. So signed him up to go learn Java, signed him up to go learn a whole lot of things. And I'm like, I'm going to be your guinea pig. I'm having this career business that I'm doing. I need these drivers to be paying. I need to be able to pay them salaries. Mm. I need to know what shifts they've done. I need to be able to train the new drivers I'm going to bring on board. Why don't you build a website? I was just calling everything website then. Why don't you build it? And as I then, I already started um, also working for large corporations. Mm. Yeah. So my business was like a side hustle. I was already doing business analysis mm. for like your likes of your Barclays and co. So I was now saying that, okay, so let's build a way in which this thing can work without me being there. And so my brother was using this as his own side project. So he built a whole CRM where the drivers will come in They'll be able to i have all their data and everything when they work they can raise an invoice and put everything there and stuff like that so we didn't even know that what we we're building was very very useful yeah. and that was like the very first main technology that we built and that we, we kept using now so why did i leave yeah. motor droppers so i let um this was now we're now in 2015. i woke up to the news that our biggest supplier went bankrupt Oof. now we had over two hundred thousand pounds worth of invoices unpaid. <laughs> I remember everything is bootstrapped, so meaning that I not only have to pay drivers, I have to also forfeit the whole money that was so over three hundred thousand was lost, and that was like the very first business that I grew to over a million pounds mm. bootstrapping, and it just went. So the remaining pieces of it, like what do I do with it? Um, I just couldn't take it anymore and this is where you know I just had to exit the whole the whole um, business, the business in, yeah. in itself so what am I going to work on kept trying to think and I'm like okay 
while I was doing my wedding, there was problems. Maybe I should build a marketplace where people can find, um, you know, event suppliers quite mm. easily. So I built Eventbrite back in 2018. It was a mobile application and um, it was really getting waves because as I then, it was like there were not a lot of competitors mm. and I was bringing people on board. I remember that year I was uh, for Small Business UK, I was a uh, finalist for Entrepreneur of the Year, Lloyd's National Business Awards, Female Founder of the Year. It was just like, oh my, where is all this coming from? And I, so that already made me see what was happening. And then I got onto the whole G20 track um, that same year. While I was there, I met an investor at the G20, because G20 basically brings a whole, a whole lot of people. And he told me, he told me, why are you focus so much on B2C? B2B is where the money is. And I'm like, okay, what's the problem with events on B2B? So we then created this, uh, we call that event corporate, which was now like a B2B app. And that was actually an event, uh, an app where you could see what is happening at the events. Um, you could basically, whenever you could connect with people that are coming to the event, things that are now like normal right now. Mm. That was like quite, quite new then. But then we built that at the back of zoho backstage we used that to learn how to do this and we got like the likes of the african union to use it we had like five presidents in africa using the application and then the phone is first release and but then i started to see that this needs a major investment mm. for it to kick off the supplier one we did about 70 events and i saw the money that was made i'm like ah tommy this one cannot sustain you <laughs> 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 and I'm like, we need, um, we need this. There needs to be a huge volume mm. for this to work. And remember, I've always backed myself. And then I, all this whole, I started to hear all about the whole startup community. This person got, and I was one of those pessimists. I'm like, why would anybody back? Why can't you back yourself? Because that's what, that's what I you've grew done, up. right? Do you understand? Yeah. I'm like, why do I need anybody to back me? If I can't back myself, that's like. You know, this is, so that was my philosophy. So I was not very like into the whole um, let's venture, find back venture. Yeah. You know, no, 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 no. I didn't get it. And then, so um, I think with that, I'm like, okay, do you know what? Eventbrite, who needs this asset? Let's go and figure out a way for us to make money mm. and come back and do Eventbrite. And the only way I could think of making money is that we built Eventbrite. Why mm. can't we build software for other people? Mm. And that's how Tedbury started. So Tedbury practically built Eventbury. So we now started to build, okay, you want to build a website, we'll build a website for you. You want to build, and the whole point is, let's try and find Right, money. so it was B2B and it was revenue because it's just contract me, we build a cop software. Exactly. It. So we then started to, let's start to find a way to make money. And with this, we'll be using this to build what we are trying to build in the background, you mm. know. But then I made a big decision in 2018 and I said, I'm going to focus on this full time. Building this whole startup, Ted Bree, Event Breeze, let me see where it gets to. And I'm not going back into a uh, consulting world anymore. My husband was like, oh, is this really going to work? And I really thank him for his um, support because that would have been a whole of very, 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 very difficult choice. But I had to do that and I was just giving it my all, putting every single thing into it. We had a team in Nigeria. I was here. And my, at this time, you guys were still just doing the building software for people? We're building software for when people. When did you move from that to um, talent? So the, it came out of this building software for people. My brother back then that I told you then became, and I brought him in and I'm like, why don't we do this together? Mm. And he then became my CTO. Mm. And this is your CTO? Yeah, CTO and co-founder actually. Mm. So, and then we, we started the whole Tedbury together. I'm starting to build things for people. So he was back in Nigeria. I was here. The customers were here. The talents were in Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. So when it was happening, we had seven people. We got an office in Nigeria and then we started to do that and started to build things for people. Um, we're making some money, but it wasn't very, very significant. And um, then the UK government came up with this old bounce back loan where you could get 50,000 with no, um, what's it called? There was no need for 
any guarantees or mm. anything like that and we're, we're one of the beneficiaries of that so we got that and that really really helped before mm. you know what's happening the strain that that the war war we had the strain was removed we could now pursue bigger customers and that's how we got our very first big enterprise customer and with the enterprise customer that allowed us to now fully be able to expand and mm. bring in um we grew quickly from a team of seven to a team of about 21 um, within that same year and that's when the business then started to really grow we then bootstrapped this business as at, the, at this time to over a million pounds in revenue as well again again at this time i'm doing it together yeah. with my with my co-founder yeah. yeah and then we now needed more talent because now more people are now coming to say build for me do this for me and i'm like okay how do we find really good talent um, I said I'm going to build a whole sausage factory, that's what I called it, <laughs> where talents keep rolling in and out. Mm. And I said, okay, maybe let me just try this out. So we called it Ted, Ted Green Nation. And I'm like, Ted Green Nation will be like a, the nation of talents, you know, that kind of thing. I'm like, okay, I'm very good at business analysis, jump on a video. So everybody was saying, Happy New Year in 2021. My Happy New Year was in front of a video. I recorded about 84 different videos, put everything into this, put it into an LMS. And I pushed that out as the very first course and gave it out, gave out to I think about 100 or 200 people and said, we are going to find three or four of these business analysts to hire mm. into Tedbury. And we were remarkably enough, some of the people that we hired then are still working with us today. And they're like instrumental to where we are right now. And um, so we found very, very good people. But surprisingly, I saw that. Remember, I gave everything for free. My yeah. only reason was because I wanted you talent. You wanted the talent. And I saw the people that, other people that got hired from other companies, Chops Insurance, British America, Tobacco. We're hiring all of this. I'm like, okay, wait, 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 wait. There's something here. And that's how we, I'm like, okay, maybe we need to redo this for real. So we decided to do another boot camp. But this time around, not just with um, business analysis, let's now really look at what is out there. And so, of course, software was already what, what everybody was saying. Yeah. So, because now we, we're talking about 2021. So, um, I did it again, the whole, um, so I think early 2022, that was when I then decided, okay, let's name this something else. Let's give it a proper mission. We came up with the name Tech One Million to accelerate the careers of a million talents. That mm. was the whole point of Tech One Million. And we then said we're going to come up with seven different boot camps. We've now created a mobile application for Tech One Million. We had uh, the lines of software engineer, front end, back end, product design, digital marketing, all of that. And we still said we're giving it away for free. But then the caveat now is the fact that you will be able to then, if we're giving this away to you for free. You will be job. able to give us um, a period of, was it three months or so, for us to place you with employers, yeah? So the point is, you will learn. We'll give you three months work experience with different companies, yeah? Then after that, we will then be able to place you with employers. The, the business model was then employers would then pay us for every placement. Mm. And that was what we were thinking then. That 2022, we applied for Google Black Founders Fund. I think that was when I saw you in yeah. 2022. And we applied for Google Black Founders Fund. And quickly, we got to the, the, the interview stage. They liked us, but then they gave like the most, the best review ever. I, it was not best then for me, because I cried. <laughs> and they're like, for me, we can't take you to the next level because of two things. One is that we're not sure if you are a, an edutech platform or a talent acquisition platform. Mm. The second is that your your revenue model seems a bit clumsy because your customer is at the end of the sales channel. Mm. You have to find a way to bring them to the beginning. Oh my God, that was the best review ever because I took everything. I'm like line for line, line for line. I'm going to, okay. So, you know, so this is now me like, okay, what did we do wrong? We, so give, making people pay us at the end, that's dumb because if these people are not good enough, we don't make any money, we spent, spent a lot, a lot of, of money. Resources with them. Okay, so what do you do? So this is where I then sat down, you know, had a whole lot of um, 
let people keep doing what they're doing in there thinking this is what taekwondo is while we then really build what we want the taekwondo of the future to be we had you should we change the name or no i'm like let's just don't name is the list of your you can always rebrand but you figure out the product let's yes. figure out this product <laughs> and this is how we then go into the whole um taekwondo and what is taekwondo now so taekwondo is an ai enterprise software uh, for the hiring industries enabling hiring managers to attract to evaluate and to hire candidates from anywhere very precise so you know exactly what you're doing no now. very clear <laughs> i think this was like the, this was like the quest of seeking clarity yeah <laughs> and when we found the clarity i think uh, the what really made taekwondo quite um, good and what it is today is the quest of just understanding that i can always turn back mm. but when i find what we want then we need to stay listening to feedbacks understanding the right people to speak to and not being scared to say you made a mistake you know and all of that is is basically how we got to quantum to this because it's like a whole circle imagine some people still think um that that was what taekwondo means so i'm like we still have to do the work of erasing that from people's minds to say that this is what we are um and this is the future of of how we are we're, we're going so now for taekwondo i'm now learning something completely different which is you're doing all of this you now want to build something in mongos mm. meaning you now need to be no venture back yeah no more bootstrapping yeah you bootstrap on your way so now you need help yeah you need to collaborate to be able to really touch the people you want to touch yeah it's a hindsight to very great teacher if you think about it it's been we stepped into the uk 2004 you said yeah it's almost 20 years i know that's a long time mm -hmm. in in hindsight if you had the opportunity to go back to 2020 2004 and do some things differently that could accelerate the process are there any things that you do differently nothing you would still do the same exactly 2018 it's like, it's like, see, see, so and this is a i don't i don't want to die here because i feel like there's so much i still have to give but if i have to i'm at peace with it because i think i've done it the right way mm. i've done it my own way and i've mm. done it i've learned every single way i've cried i've laughed i've been happy i've been up i've been down i'm not scared to go down i'm not scared to go up you know i'm right where i want to be yeah that makes sense biggest lesson Hmm. The biggest lesson is don't be scared to dream. Um, I thought I could dream, but I think my dreams sometimes were confined to the spaces I was in. in. So now I know that um, I need to be able to dream really big. And it's not also just about the people that you know. It's about who knows you, who is going to be an advocate for you when you're in the room, when you're not in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those are kind of like things that took me a while to learn. I learned them along the way. And I feel like those are kind of things that I want my kids. Those are things I'm putting into my kids right now. You have to be kind to the people you meet as you go along the way because you don't know if you're going to need them again coming down. And if those people might just be the biggest advocates to you in every time. So I just go by my principle of treat people the way you like to be treated. And just be kind to others as you go along while you're trying to do life because life is small but it's also long you mm -hmm. know and it's just about how you see it if we all just want me 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 um then it's just going to be a very very boring life but i think you think about me but you also think about the others that you do the life with for it to be a really interesting one yeah that's, that's a really good one to just keep dreaming i think the two things i'm thinking from your story okay the first one is resilience mm -hmm. that's and maybe because that's what you started with the first question you can you just start with like i went to body school i was building resilience i went to polytechnic i was building resilience and as you start speaking i realized oh you've probably thought about your story a lot and i found like the threads from your childhood that's made you who you are and mm -hmm. i think resilience is one of those things but even just like seeing how you have worked and you have found opportunities and you have failed and you have started again and you have started again and you have started again that's a very resilient spirit um, because people can see you now like oh my god she's traveling all of this she has this big business she's doing really well figure out your linkedin looks like oh just an amazing career mm -hmm. but they don't know like the behind the scenes and the things that you have to go through yeah. so that's resilient spirit that hey, for people to get to like where they are now mm -hmm. you have to be willing to like just keep going even when it gets hard 
and i think the other one is just like very similar but just like the hustling spirit and just like making sure that wherever i am you're able to find opportunities that can kind of like get you out of that place that you are to the next one yeah until you maybe find the big breaks right that exactly. kind of then 10x it or really accelerate it and like um my my text as md will say so tommy you've hustled we're not hustling anymore now it's time to do the <laughs> actual like, sit do, down level headed and do an actual business yes so yeah. i feel like yes yeah i think i i, t- I see what you see um resilience definitely and yes i've always had the hustling spirit not really caring what anybody had to say it was just a matter of i want this i really feel like i can be anything i want to be it's yeah. just about am i ready to pay the price yeah and if i say yes my yes is yes i'm just going i can't really think of anything else and that's what i go for yeah just very last question in terms of like now building like an actual business beauty bootstrap business you've just done like side hustles um one of the key differences now is one you're building a business as technical to you're building a venture bank business now what other elements differentiates what tech one how you're building tech one m for all the many other things that you've done so i think that culture is also something that I've learned that it's very, very important. Um, and that is one of the things that we are really looking to strengthen in Tekwonem. Because like I said, when you're building a, a, a venture back, whatever business, venture back or not, people process systems is what really takes your business to the next level. Mm. And you can't eliminate one without the other. So we are putting in the right uh, systems bringing in the right people is very very important and you only have the right people if they feel like oh this is a place they can also call home and they can feel relaxed but we are living in an era in an era where you know people don't stay at a place for 10 years and mm-hmm. people like basically switch it so how do you build something that is you know sustainable and continuable that when someone comes in today and um they live in tomorrow they still are an advocate for your company wherever they are and i think i've learned that through building tedbury and that's something that i'm now trying to really implement into tech one m um to make us not just um one of the the leading um what's it called the, the leading hr tech platform out there but also a place where people will really really want to work for and people want to say yeah you should work for these people it's a great place to work so all of that is the, the thing I'm, i'm i'm doing right now makes sense what are your final final words if there's one thing you want people to take away from your story from everything that you share so um i think if there is anyone listening and um there are people listening absolutely <laughs> and um and this resonates with them one way or the other maybe trying to build something or trying to work i just feel like in everything you do absolutely giving your all we're living in an era where you feel like oh you're you have a job you have a side hustle you've heard me talk about have a job have a side hustle but what i probably didn't tell you is i show up in my job as much as i show up in my side hustle yeah. so showing up and making people really know that you're a person of integrity really really goes a long way as you move up that ladder so whatever thing you're trying to do if you're trying to build the biggest startup in the world you absolutely can but you have to have the right integrity and the right people to be able to speak about you because you need them as you keep going up and i think that is one thing that i feel might be lost in this sort of um i want to get rich quick era that we are in people are not the compromising values and compromising you know things that shouldn't that will probably end up burning you and i think if there's anything that's one of the things i want people to take out of this you can be absolutely anything you want to be but don't compromise on the major things like when you are moving up make sure you're kind to the people that are missing it if you're at a job right now put in your absolute best learn what you need to learn and be able to take that onto your next part and they will you will be appreciated for it because you gave it your all and and that's what I'll say so we got us what you're doing give it your all no matter how many times you're doing it or how many things you're doing give everything that you're doing your best then you have no regrets at the end because you know that you gave it your give all give it your best yeah amazing that's a really good way to end this video guys give it your best thank you so much for watching this video make sure you subscribe to my channel i'll see you in the next one peace